around this side and see if this has different quality from the thing. Okay, here we go, we're ready. A reading from the, the New Testament of, as rendered by the Gullah people, my people of South Carolina. Um, right there, like that. You know, the Gullah Geechee, you know, the Geechee people, they're all, they're all over the place. You know, at least the southern you know, Georgia, the islands, down through whatever. Um, anyway, so we read, and what we do is we just go to any page, and this is, uh, go to 2 Corinthians, it was page uh, uh, 623, I guess. Now, see, this is the, this is the, um, the translation or trans, whatever, of the uh, trans something of the uh, old English, you know, this the old English writing right there, that's like the Shakespeare, Marlowe writing, and this is, this is the Gullah right here of the New Testament of the Holy Bible. So we go to page uh, 263, I don't like, for some reason, I don't think the 263 is appropriate. Let's say uh, 260, I mean, six, 627 is where we're going to. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do 9 here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, this is 9. And what we do is we're reading this so that we, uh, well, let me read this first. I ain't on a, I ain't want on a for think that I don't write on a them letter for me on a scared. And that translation for mine is that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, what I'm trying to do is um, I, I read every day. Oh, so, well, today is Saturday. I suppose we'll reveal the set. I'll tell you that in a second, or at least afterwards. But I read every day to um, uh, just to connect with my Gullah Geechee, you know, maternal side background. Just to, I figured, you know, when they was newly freed from slavery, then what they did was they learned they were literate pretty quick. <laughs> so, so uh, I just wanted to go through that experience. So I've been doing this for for a while now. And it's sort of, it's difficult, but not difficult sometimes getting used to it. So I just see how far I, I'll, I'll go with it, okay? So usually read it twice. Let's read it twice again. Again, this is page uh, 627, 2 Corinthians 10, and this is 9. I ain't wanna, I ain't want honor for think that I did write honor them letters for me on a scared. And the translation, old English translation is, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. There you go. Um, so again, I, 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 I do this uh, daily, except, well, uh, not, not on Sundays. Sundays we read from my book of scriptures, my modern book of scriptures, which was uh, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s uh, uh, tome, uh, the compensatory concept. I, I have a copy up here, luckily, like that. This is, I'm at my... Uh, my uh, brother's house, my fraternity brother's house. Mm. Can get some coconut water so I parch through. So anyway, so um, uh, so usually I have a different set, and I left everything down there. I left my glasses. I left my my nephew. I usually have over my right shoulder, everything like that. So this is a new set. <laughs> new set. This is a living room. My brother. This um, uh, I think that's actually a uh, uh, Osa. I'm a Osa culture, um, they look like Klamakosa people. Anyway, he's a big time African, Africana studies kind of guy, so he's got a lot of books and stuff like that. So, that's where we are right now, that's where we said be. Um, I usually, this is Kente cloth that I got a long time ago, I forgot where I got it from. Um, uh, but there's all kinds of Kente cloth, I just, this color just sort of like, I wear this hat like this, like an ecumenical, you know, I feel, feel like ecumenical, but this is actually, um, uh, this is green. You see, it's green on one side, like little, little red, and they have black. Black is the other side, right? And so, what I usually do, in fact, I should wear this today. I'm gonna wear this on the 
I've dimmed to the, it's been done in for a while. On this side, I don't know, I'll wear it like this. Cause it's raining out today. I sometimes wear this like this. I'll do it again, I don't know, I'll figure. I'll do something else. Anyway, um, so this is the, the colors, um, uh, the, the, the black, the green, with a bit of red is the colors for the, uh, the Santeria, or the, uh, the Yoruba culture that came up uh, through, Port Port through Cuba, through to North America. Now that same Yoruba culture, uh, it's, 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 the co it's the colors for Ogun. Ogun is the, is the Orisha, you know, the selected head for, uh, for actually war. And he's the one with the grass skirt and, 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 the, and the technology, the, the, that mod technology of that day, the machete. Um, but it, in, in, in Yoruba culture, in, in, uh, in Nigeria, the color is blue. When it goes to Brazil, it changes them for condom blade. The colors are, are blue and white. But then when it comes up through the Santeria, strain up to North America, it became red, black, and green, which is, uh, well, black, uh, green, a little bit of red, which is kind of interesting because that's the colors of liberation. You know, Pan-African, the color, you know, Marcus Garvey, the kind of color of liberation. It's fascinating to me. Anyway, so always in a mode of like, uh, I won't say war, but doing stuff, right? Um, and then, of course, the the, 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 the color bottle. I got to get a, a, another copy. Um, this I got from, uh, see, well, I had mailed, I, they mailed it to me, but it seems like the, um, see, it's the Sea Island Translation Team, okay? Uh, the Wycliffe Bible Translators, okay? American Bible Society. It came out in 2005, that's interesting. The American Bible Society put this out, so I got a, I want to get another copy, so I'm gonna, so I'll um, bring it down to South Africa with me. Um, but even that kind of copy is just, just fine. I, I, I keep it well, and that's it. So, so, so for the next few couple of weeks, I guess, or maybe even more, um, I'll be um, here. I'll be at this at this set. <laughs> okay, so bare minimum, no glass. I got to really not suffer trying to read the stuff. But at least I got enough light. All right. Okay. Take care. See you soon. Little, well, message from me, T from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect via the, uh, the Gullah translation of the New Testament. Okay, so this, and what I do here, I immediately put this on to my uh, compressor. We compress. We can, what the heck happened there? We compress this so that when it goes up, uh, you know, it takes less space, I guess, whatever compression means. Um, compress, and also I gotta, when I label this thing, because you label it, oh, come on, I gotta check. It's good to have this little tab here, so, you know, get to be old, you just forget things. So I go back to page um, uh, 627. So I label it 627, Gullah, G-U-L-L, -L, Gullah, uh, then I put the little underscore, and then I just put 627 here, 627, uh, take out the keep, forget keep metadata, start the compression, and then that will, when that's done, I'll put it onto the, um, I'll put it onto my YouTube, but I'll schedule it. Usually I schedule it a little after midnight, but tonight I'll schedule it at midnight because this is Saturday, and I don't do what I'm saying. Like I said, I get Mr. Neal Fuller Jr.'s book on Sundays. Uh, I do that. So I, I, I premiere for that. I should, I should show you the Mr. Neal Fuller Jr.'s book, shouldn't I? Okay, hold on. Stay right here. You know, just take in the, the thing. Let me, let me go here and check this real quick. See, basically, this is a, the, you know, all, all your religions, um, well, the modern religions, let's put it that way, they're all aspects of a, a larger thing, you know, so these, the, whether you do the Christian thing or some other thing or the, or the, or the, the Muslim thing or the Hindu thing or the, or the uh, Hebrew thing or whatever it is, you have, there's still aspects of something else. It's just like, like branches, I won't say cults, but like branches of that. 
So and and, and they they write the scripture down. And of course, scriptures come through people. So they said it's the word of God, influenced by the word of God. Oh, God had the hand in it. That's great. Okay, fine. But this here, this is what I do. This is my Sunday reading. This is a uh, uh, called the. Uh, the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. It's a compensatory counter racist code. Uh, this is the 2016 edition from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s revised and expanded edition, edition here. And like it says here, it's a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. says is white supremacy. So if you're not a victim, then this is not scripture for you. Just like if you're not if you're not a if you're not a Christian, then this is this is then this is not a a book for you, you know, if you're not, whatever, whatever. So, um, so every Sunday, uh, and I've started this thing down in South Africa where, because um, I have, this is a, this is the revised edition 2016. There's also uh, an edition that came out in, in uh, 1984 that they re republished in this, um, they republished it, and I have a picture of it here, in this kind of format, but I have the original one, actually, it's strangely, I, I got from, Dr. Conyers here, my, my, my fraternity brother here, he gifted it to me, and I brought it down to South Africa to um, to Alice, where they had the Lovedale Press, which is a, uh, during the old bad old days of apartheid, when they were struggling, the Lovedale Press is when they published the stuff from there, um, that they got, let's say, counter-propaganda out, <laughs> let's put it that way. And so I had that, that book, is because it's a larger format, I had that rebound, because like, let's say this, let's say, see, this is the this is this size for this this book here, right? I mean, this is this size for this book here. But the original one is this is like is this is like this. So I had it rebound and um, and I had it uh, well, I had it bound up by Love Their Press, all signed and everything like that. So that's the that's like the the description. Like like you go to these churches and they have a big big Bible or whatever, or you go to uh, uh, the um, the Hebrew Israelites. You know, they got the they got the ornate you know, Bible like that. Well, to me, um, the uh, compensatory concept, that's that's our uh, scripture, our Bible, if you will. So, so I'm doing that down there with the kids down there. The kids, I mean, the, the young people down there. I work, I work with young people down there in South Africa. And uh, we're doing this whole program when I'm trying to, not trying to, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, See, there's this thing. It's interesting enough because I'm, like I said, I'm in the house of my fraternity brother. But my fraternity had been my, I, I placed in my fraternity, made my fraternity when I was like um, 15 years old. And the fraternities, uh, you know, they have these Greek letter fraternities. And, you know, you go through, a, you have a shared common struggle. And then when you come through with your line or with your, with your grouping, then, then, then you'll, you'll have bonded because you all went through something together. Okay. So, but. Uh, it, what Greek fraternities use, they call Greek fraternities. When they came to the United States, uh, when they came over, they lost whatever they, well, it's trans, transformed. But we remember, we come from a lot of societies where you have initiation rites for uh, for young people. Young men, I'm talking about men now. Uh, I guess women have it too, but I'm, I'm just dealing with the men right now. They have these initiation rites um, to, to cross over the manhood, like a uh, like a South Africa is initiation every right now we're probably in an initiation season or we're coming to it right now. Well, we just finished one coming through it. When they have the school breaks, that's when they do that. But they do it when they're like eighteen, uh, you know, seventeen, eighteen, even less eighteen, nineteen, maybe even longer than that, twenty. But that's too late because your initiation is supposed to happen when you are the, the, the initiation down in South Africa, at least Southern Africa, they do they do the cutting of the foreskin, right? Well, the Zulus don't do that. I guess shocked at some particular point. Say, they, they, I can't have my warriors out for like two weeks or whatever it wants to heal. No, no, I need to get, no, we're going we to cut that, whatever. Um, but the, I'm in a, I live in a, in a, in a village that's a, a, a Isi Kosa, no, Ama Kosa uh, area, a stronghold, as we say. So they still do that when they go to initiation. But um, uh, but what happens with, when, when they came to the United States, we have no formal initiation for young men to to transition to man to, to manhood, but then I realized that again I made my fraternity when I was fifteen. Uh, that the proper age to to transition somewhere between I won't say twelve, say thirteen and say seventeen, somewhere somewhere in there. When I say when you first get your dog water, that would be like twelve years old. But let's leave the handle there. Um, so uh, uh, so what I'm doing down there is 
since they have to go through their initiation because of their culture and whatever happened when they're little, when they're a little older, eighteen or whatever happened. Because I was told it was, it was younger, it used to be younger, but then they have the school system. I don't know whatever they do right now. Uh, uh, so I want to catch the, the the young men before their official initiation. We do everything but the cutting. You see, so we will be learning stuff, but mainly farming, uh, mainly you know planting, farming. And some skills, and we we'll, we have audio drama, some some things for young people to do at that age, you know, 13, 14, somewhere around there. I don't want to really go past 16, but even 15 would be kind of kind of old, you know what I mean? So I had that idea, so I'm working on that um, down in um, down in South Africa, down in Dabaza, where I'm where I'm stationed, where, where I'm tasking from, and I live in a smaller village, so a little bit further, like like 45 minutes away. Um, so that's it. So. Um, uh, so that's what's happening, and I know I've told you everything. We got a little, little reveal of what's going on, all right? So that's what I'm up to. I'm in New York for a little bit. We'll see what happens. It's kind of interesting because I'm, I'm always running to people that I want to um, interview. Uh, right now, I'm going down to this place called the uh, Carter Institute, C-A-R-A -A Inst Institute. And I just interviewed a sister there. She uh, She's the communications person, uh, uh, associate or whatever it is. And um, she's from um, Iswatini, you know, uh, Swaziland, formerly in Swaziland. And uh, so it was interesting uh, to have that because there's a, uh, a concert or a installation that, that Neil Myanga is, is doing there. And so I'm going to see him, and he's part of the Pan-African world. Here's his Chimarangu. Uh, here, it's Pan-African Space Station. We did Pan-African Space Station together, so, like that, so I know him from that. So um, I'm I'm going down there to to do that, but uh, I got a haircut yesterday, and 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 and, and the guy that was got his haircut right before me, he's a, a dancer with the Alvin Ailey company. He's like the principal, one of the principal dancers there, like that. So it's interesting uh, because I want to interview him. Some when well, I didn't get his details, something like that. But he's having a thing at the end of the month, so maybe I'll try to get get down there and see his show, and then have to be able to interview him. But I, I always meet the people in New York, and I want to interview them, and and just because I do these these things. That we do it for archival purposes only, and it's just to. I think everybody should, at their particular, as they're moving along life, they should sort of um, do an audio memoir so that their their generations behind them will know what exactly what was going on, not rely on the media, you know, not rely because as you can see, these guys be lying all the time. I don't even know why they like to lie. It's it's, it's crazy, you know. Uh, so that's it. Let me let me let you go. Uh, did my test, see what's going on. All right, talk to you later.